This week on the show, we have game dev and one of the heads of the Metal Gear Solid VR remake, Vapor Cephalopod. And if you're enjoying the show and want to help support it, make sure to check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Kojima Freak. Also want to give a huge shout out to everybody that's listened to the show so far. We just passed over 100,000 downloads recently, so thank you all so much for listening again. We appreciate you. We'll have uh, more big guests and more real Metal Gear podcasting coming to you soon. Fingers. Yo, it's Apache Smash. Hey everyone, this is Days Ahead. And I'm Nitroid. You're listening to the Kojima Frequency. Yeah, this was something I saw today that I was just kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> Keeps changing why he says uh, Solid is the name for Solid Snake. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like, actually, it was this shit from... <laughs> On this old CD. <laughs> yeah, because I've like thought for a long time that it was something else. So when I read that, I was like, hmm. Yeah, people wasn't it like the the transition from 2D to 3D, and then like I don't know, and then like he wanted them to be like a solid character versus the weird looking other ones. I don't know. Well, that was for your. There's like two different things there. Uh, the 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 reason that. It was called Metal Gear Solid was because of the character name and because of the jump from 2D to 3D. And I guess it was because he was uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was like uh, a jab at, at Square mm-hmm. Soft, you know, because they were sort of leading, you know, they were on the bleeding edge of of, of console games at the time. Well, I guess this is talking more about him. Like this, the character Solid Snake, yeah. actually, in the, in the tweet, yeah. He says that Solid and Solid Snake, the codename of the main character in Metal Gear. So well, this would be before. But even there, like, it yeah. was different because he talked about how the name Solid Snake was uh, in contrast to Snake Plissken, who he saw as more of like a smooth snake, mm-hmm. you know? And so this is YMO, Yellow Magic Orchestra? Yeah, I never really listened to him. But I guess I'm gonna now. Yeah. This is cracking me up because it just made me want to check Cliffy B's stupid ass tweet about <laughs> almost working on Silent Hill. Yeah. Like, you know, granted really time playing. zones, but like no interaction whatsoever <laughs> from Kojima. Kojima's just like, mm. just left swerve. him on red. <sighs> My man, pro- it probably was like, for anybody who doesn't know the context, like Cliffy B put out some random reply to Kojima that was like, man, we would have worked on Silent Hill. And it's funny because it gives me the same energy as those like those those DMs that Adam Levine was sending to those Instagram models, <laughs> like on the down oh, no. low, like same energy. <laughs> and like no interaction whatsoever. Nitroid, I think you like asked for some clarification and he didn't send shit <laughs> he's uh, not going to reply to me that's not gonna happen but i shot my shot so you know a yeah. very uh a very sure jan moment sure jan <laughs> i can't help but picture like oh god so like cliffy said what exactly he said something like we almost did silent hill together years ago right and i don't mean to be a jerk about it, but like all I can imagine is is Cliff going to Kojima and being like, hey, we should we should like work on Silent Hill together. And Kojima being like, Haha, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and then just walking off. Well, like and, and then he's like, yeah, we're totally going to do that. And it was a reply like tweet because at, at first, God, he didn't even get retweeted on this one either. Um, he said, I miss this fellow and I miss Japan. And he tagged, you know, Hideo. And it's, and it's a picture of him. In a, yeah, in a, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I'm being, I'm being a, a mean cynic. Yeah, and then someone said, "Please be side of a collab," and then that's when he was like, "Yeah, we almost did Silent Hill." You know, it was just like ah. Very, uh, very strong reply guy energy from there. <laughs> <laughs> what has Cliff done lately? <laughs> Drop his staff without giving them proper severance. Oh, no. 
Okay, you know what? Maybe or, I shouldn't have or knowledge that, <laughs> that they're getting fired or laid off. Oh, boy. <clears throat> this is getting... Keep going there. All of you keep going there, because the more you all go there, the better I'm going to look at the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> keep going no, there. No, no, keep no, no, no. See, alternatively, I don't want to take away from that energy. Like... Yeah, this is this is your time to shine. You know, I'm I'm really cuz I'm about to I'm about to transition to this with speaking of dipshits on Twitter. <laughs> God, because that fucking this. guy, oh, wow, there's like so many okay, this is kind of a bad segue actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this because it be, it pretty much began with like Konami just being like, you know, hey, we're going to talk about a beloved series at TGS. And then, of course, wink, all wink. of us were just like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, shit, I can never get the name Suikoden, pronounced right. Yeah. So we get in. Yeah. Su. We. Ku. Den. Check the episode. I, I was like, everyone, everyone have a guess what it's going to be now. And, yeah. and Day said Suikoden. Yeah. And, you know. I we literally like, can't even pronounce this shit. And I predicted that just based off of, you know, just a little bit of critical thinking, you know, you dig a little bit of research. No, it's that IP renewal that you called too. That. It was a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah although the IP, were, like, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm not even, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> that sure didn't stop people. Usually, I'm I'm literally the type of person that is like, okay, like, it, you know, I, IP renewal doesn't really mean that much, but in this case, yep. yeah, like, it did like, all the stars aligned. Uh, and then, of course, some folks, like, you know, when they hear Konami and Beloved series, it's like, you know, let's forego any sort of, like, research here and let's kind of hit with going back to another thing we talk about on this show sort of like the anime twist uh <laughs> and you know that's, that's 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 usually not how things work in real life so when it, it turned out like and then of course like blogs you know they do what they do blogs and twitter uh, you know this is hey this is uh a beloved Konami series. This is it. This is the leaks that we've been telling y'all about all along. Uh, and then, of course, when it's the weekend in, did I get that right? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. When it's the weekend in, like people go ape shit. Like both the silent Hi facets of the Silent Hill and the Metal Gear community, like kind of really misbehave here, in my opinion. Yeah. Everybody acting out because, you know, it's just, it's not Metal Gear. It's not Silent Hill. It's, it's I don't know. That's really, like, disrespectful to all the Suikoden fans. Like, this is a game, it hasn't had an entry since, like, 2006 or something like that. So, and, and those last ones weren't even that great. But you talk about the first two games. I mean, classic JRPGs that were some of my favorites. I mean, they're, they're up there with, you know, your Final Fantasy VI and stuff like that. So, yeah, they're, they're fucking excellent games. Yeah. And not only that, but they're, they're crazy expensive to buy. Sure. If you want to buy, if you want to buy them in this country, if you want one and two, it's about five hundred quid. So it's cool that they're getting a you know PC version, and it's a remaster too. Like they're doing like full you know, uh, and this is something again where we could hopefully have an option to switch back and forth between the original and the updated version. But um, they're doing both yeah. stuff where they can actually put in more text and localize it better. Where they're like resizing the dialogue box. They're they're kind of, it looks like they're trying to give it a little bit of care. I saw a video too where they're actually not even making it for PS5. Uh, they're just trying to make it more accessible and have it on as many, I guess, as many systems as they can sell it to. But, wow, what Konami series do we really want them to do that with? Yeah. You know, it, 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 <laughs> right. it's, a good, it's a good sign, right? Especially when the quality of the TM, T, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles port was so good. Yeah. Hopefully, this is going to be really good too. Uh, you know, keep strengthening and building on that, and saying, "Wow, we're you know we're refreshing these games, we're porting them to new systems, and they're selling really well." I'm hoping that in the background, they are working on something. I mean, signs point to that with them mm -hmm. saying on the f the 35th anniversary, and also yeah. I said on the show, I said literally, if they're looking to bring it back and they're going to do a remaster then it would take time for that to happen. And that's why they haven't just put the old ones back on the stories because they're going to do this. I'm not a huge fan of that. I want the old ones. But if you look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, maybe we'll get both. Who knows? Like, I'm, yeah. this, this, is, this feels like a win. And because these fucking rumor merchants and just <laughs> dishonest people... Rumor merchants? <laughs> I like that term. Like, everyone's mad at Konami for doing basically what we've been asking them to do in the first place what are you lying 
Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna steer this shit back around because we <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, but on the note of bringing back, first of all, hold on, wait, we, wait, 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 we got vapor cephalopod on the show. What, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> Thanks I for was gonna on. do sorry, that. Man. I'm sorry, Jerk. vapor. It's been a fucking weird day, mate. I'm God. sorry. <laughs> Yo, you what's stole up? it from me. <laughs> you got to be quicker. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so used to just listening. I got to jump in more. <laughs> I was going to say, like, on the subject of bringing back old games and sort of, you know, either remastering or revisiting or reimagining aspects of them, that's kind of what, what you've been doing lately and what you've been working on in, in your spare time. Yeah, trying to do something like that. I mean, I try... I try not to say that, like, I am going to remake this game. That that is going to happen. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, there's been um, a lot of confusing talk around it. So I'll just I'll put it to you. Like, sort of give us the rundown of what it is you're working on. So wh- I'd say what what it is that I'm doing is starting a group that maybe someday could remake the game and trying to make you know everything available to the community so so people could maybe not just remakes but do other projects as well so sort of like um well when you say when you say remake like what's the scope of what you've been working on currently because i've seen i've seen a lot of stuff and i know your name's attached to to a lot of it and um i've i've sort of had a hard time figuring out like which pieces are related and and if it's one project or two because there was the the vr aspect of it that was getting a lot of attention there and showed up on some news sites. And then there's, uh, I know you've been extracting a lot of resources from the game and throwing them into unreal engine. And so I, I just kind of want to get a picture of like what it is that you're working on and like in what capacity. Yeah. So we've been extracting everything. We've got, we've got all the models from the game, all the lighting, a uh, ton of the audio, a, a bunch of the animations, and and yeah like you said putting that stuff into unreal engine and vr is a is a huge focus of mine but yeah it's it has spawned other projects which is why there's there's some confusion which is part of why i wanted to come on here and and get a, get a chance to try to clear that up cuz yeah there's other projects that have spawned out of this now so it's not just you it's like it's a bunch of people working together yeah yeah um like well, like four or five people that are working on and off on it and others that are kind of going off and doing their own thing with, with what I've made available. And it started out as like, what is, is, is it through like a Boneworks mod or, or is now, is it a separate thing that you guys are working on or is both projects still going? Yeah, both projects are still going. My My thing is the Unreal Engine project and and I just make that, available to the community and then the the boneworks thing is um holy dh he's he's doing that all on his his own and and that's his own project that's kind of spawned out of this gotcha and that's using all the assets that you've been able to pull out of the game yeah so when it comes to to taking the resources from MGS1 and sort of rebuilding all that in Unreal Engine, like how how do you approach that? Because there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I guess the best way to put it is is this: uh, MGS1 is far from a decompiled game. I know there are projects that have you know made some you know have had some success in in taking it apart to some degree. I think there's one project that's about thirty percent uh, through decompiling the binary and uh, essentially, re- you know, attempts to reverse engineer it aren't aren't finished. So so like when it comes to like game logic and getting the behavior down and all of that, are you just sort of like, how are you getting the the right behaviors and the right, you know, uh, code that you would need to do it? Are you sort of eyeballing it and just sort of like playing through and testing it and checking everything? Or like, are you actually pulling scripts uh out of the game that have been sort of uh, decompiled or like, I like, I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing here. Cause you know, what, like how, what, what is your approach to this? Yeah. Right now, like the, all of the, uh, like the AI is, is just custom built blueprints, but maybe someday, like I would like to eventually implement the original once they've decompiled that stuff. Like once it's in C, you could put it into unreal engine. Yeah. 
So that's, but I mean, that's a huge long-term plan that all relies on the, you know, the other reverse engineering groups. And I don't know, are we, are we allowed to say the, the hackers of Liberty in here? <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can ask them later. I talked to those guys enough. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not super like, um, I'm not really big in that community, but I definitely lurk over there and watch and yeah, that's like they developed the tools that I use. Yep, same. A, a lot of what I was doing to to which admittedly isn't much, but but what little I was doing to mod MGS2, you know, like mesh swaps, animation swaps, texture mods, those kind of things. Um a lot of it came from just gleaning information uh from those guys. Because they've they've really done the groundwork. Yeah, they're they're the real deal, and I'm just kind of building off of what they've already provided for us. Yeah, yeah. I was reading your interview. I forget with which publication, but I remember you talking very general terms, but talking about like the reverse working closely with the reverse engineering team. I think you called it. Uh, I was like, huh. I wonder sort of who that defines. But it sounds like you're breaking that down here. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are ridiculous. A little stone right now, but it just hit me why you just said the reverse engineer guys instead of like their actual names. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if they 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 like to be a little more secretive. I'm I'm wide open. I don't I don't worry too much about that stuff. It does raise a question though, uh with you know, l hate to call it legal concerns, but that's kind of what it is. Are you worried about sort of getting the hammer dropped on you at any point? Uh, I mean, it's definitely something I think about. I wouldn't say worried. I'm, uh, how should I put this? Like, part of what drives me is that I'm, I'm kind of wanting to challenge Konami. They, like, they need to, they need to show their hand or something, you know? Like, if they're not going to do it, somebody will, so... And it's if, been a bit of know, a drought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing is like the Metal Gear community is hungry. They want something. Like this is something I I really want. And so I was like, they're not gonna do it. I should. I should try. Like somebody should try. So Damn, that's a very uh <laughs> that's a very noble approach to it. Just playing chicken with them. <laughs> I respect the shit out of. And I don't mean uh like in a hesitant way. I was just trying to find a good word for it. On that same note, uh, there have been, I don't, I don't know if you, if you have seen this, you probably have, but um, one developer sort of came out of nowhere uh, a while back and announced, uh, his name's uh, Octosaur, I don't know how to pronounce his username, uh, but he uh, did a lot of his own reverse engineering of Metal Gear Solid 2 and managed to build in a fully functional... Uh, MGS3 subsistence style 3D camera into the game, into the PC version of Substance. And he's planning to release that on November 5th uh, for the for Substance's 20th anniversary, and he's going to open source all the tools he did, and even says that with a lot of the groundwork he's laid, uh, it's feasible for other developers to pick it up and finish decompiling MGS2 in its entirety, which is kind of insane. Yeah, that looks awesome. It's um one of one of the big things he he did, which which may actually end up helping you because there's so much DNA shared between uh you know the the engines of MGS one, two, and three. Uh, is uh, he built a GCL decompiler, and for people who are unaware, GCL is sort of the scripting language used for a lot of the the in game behaviors and event scripting in these games and you know it's evolved over the course of these games but um you know it's been sort of carried forward through each one so the it's it's also one of the hardest nuts to crack when it comes to modding these games you really got to know your stuff and it's way above my head so the fact that he built a decompiler for it so that people can presumably start making edits to the gameplay scripts themselves uh in MGS2 is just uh, unbelievable to me it's it's gonna crack the 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 modding scene wide open yeah definitely i'm gonna keep my eye on that project for sure i was gonna ask do you think they could help you a bit with your fat man level design dilemma <laughs> um honestly yeah probably um 
I don't know. It really depends. I don't know enough about GCL to say. I know it, it sort of manages the the sort of gameplay logic, but not necessarily uh, things like. I, I from what I understand, I don't think you're able to modify maps uh, with GCL. But with a lot of the legwork that this guy's done, it's probably going to start opening up more doors for people since there's less work to be done to take the game apart. I don't know enough to say. Uh, poss- very possibly, yeah. The main the main problem with the whole Fat Man mod thing that kind of put a, a hamper on it was, uh, on the tanker you die pretty much. Uh, immediately during the first sort of pseudo gameplay segment where Otacon's like, all right, you know, let's look at your gear. That's technically like a cut scene, but done through gameplay, you know? Um, And the result of that is since you're loading in Fat Man's animations and everything, he just goes flying off the tanker and dies immediately. <laughs> so you actually die during a cut scene. <laughs> So the only way to get past that is if you make a save as soon as the game starts and you're out of the cutscenes, and then you load the mod in and that works fine. And then you can you can beat the tanker uh, as Fat Man from beginning to end. Um, but the plant mission is a, the plant chapter is a little different. There are a lot of tight spaces that are difficult to crawl through and not that's not a f- <laughs> because he's larger. It's because of the way the. <laughs> Uh, the character's movement works. Um, he gets stuck in a lot of places. It's almost like a chaos mod in a lot of ways. You know, you're fighting with controls that aren't supposed to exist. So there are, uh, a, there's at least one of the C4 on a normal playthrough that is impossible to get. It's the one in the hair. It's the one on the Harrier, since you can't really crawl as Fat Man. You can sort of glitch your way to the one in Strut A. Uh, but the Harrier C4 is completely, uh, you can't get it. Um, and then, uh, when it comes to later segments of the game, there are spots where you have to do an aerial over a gap as Raiden. Respect. <laughs> yeah, you, t- you taught me that. I got it. I got it. Um, but you can't do that as Fat Man either. So there's literally no way to progress and there's two different segments. So you would, you would either have to, change fat man's control scheme which i don't know if gcl will allow you'd have to force it to load the area later when the bridge is repaired instead of the normal area you'd have to make it load the map where the bridge is repaired sorry i don't Uh, know the technical terms that yeah yeah essentially and that would get you through but that wouldn't stop that wouldn't fix the harrier so there's a lot of things to consider um, and GCL would probably, you know, being able to edit the GCL would probably address at least some of it, but I don't know enough yet. This is, these are questions for people way smarter than me. I feel like it's on a precipice where a few things need to happen, and then all of a sudden, everything that you could possibly want to do with the game will be available. Like it's, yeah. that, it's almost there at that point. And I, yeah. I really do hope we get like, more clever people looking into it because i don't know i don't know the first thing about this stuff but if we had like a lot of mods for the games and people creating mods like they do for resident evil i know i know i've talked about this before but like it would be like a whole new age of content like metal gear content that's possible and it would be so so cool and that's kind of what you're trying to drive for vapor except with mgs1 instead right yes i mean i i made the the map a whole map complete seamless end to end and yeah, I mean that's that's the big thing I've done so far. But yeah, I mean it's and we, I, we've started some on on MGS two. Like I've I've extracted a bunch of the the scenes of MGS two, and so I'll keep I'll probably keep going through the series. It would be nice if there were um, ways to do MGS three as well, but. With the fact that there was never a PC port for that one, it's you know it's just that and four are just sort of locked down, you know. Yeah, there's I mean there's some tools for three, but yeah, yeah it's just like it's just like so many more models. You know, one is is so much easier because it's it's just so simple. But yeah, the more complex the models get, like just the more work it is to rebuild everything. Yeah. 
and and then in two at least because it has the PC version and people have had time to sort of pull it apart for so long. It's not it's not as bad, but with three, like I've been able to do some texture modding in three, but that's about it. It's not just that, but like if you if you make something, if you make like a mod for MGS two, it's pretty like user friendly for people to be able to install that to their PC game. But when yeah. you talk about three, it's like okay, you need this emulator, this version, um, right? Right. And, and, like it's just so le- less people are going to do it. Basically, less people are going to are going to play whatever you make. Yeah, there's like a, a longer. It's it's way more involved because you've essentially got to take the ps2 game make changes to it which you know you can you can definitely once once this is sort of a solved science so to speak you know there are definitely going to be ways to do this more easily you know take the game apply said patch uh and then run the game in an emulator you know and and emulators are getting easier and easier to use pcsx2's uh development builds are phenomenal they're yeah uh way way beyond what they've been using for public builds uh you know super easy to use more like rpcs3 the the ps3 emulator and how smooth that is and and dolphin and you know super polished emulators like that that are super easy to use uh it's get it's getting there so i mean you know there's there's a pathway to doing this kind of stuff but but the fact that it's sort of landlocked to consoles makes the modding process a lot harder shout out duck station as well like duck station has silently yes, been killing it for a yeah. while yeah let's go that came out of nowhere yeah for real yeah. and it rocks it's so yeah. it is so good <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous how good that emulator is um but yeah i mean the i mean i guess the for me personally the end goal of all of this mgs reverse engineering whether it's one two three it doesn't doesn't really matter though i'd kind of let's be honest i personally prefer two but um is is custom missions and maps, you know, as it, it, the first time I got my hands on on MGS one and, and started playing with the VR missions, like my immediate thought was, God, I wish I could make my own VR missions and like Hell share yeah. them with friends. Fuck, and yeah. then MGS two made these amazingly huge, complicated versions of them. I was like, man, why don't they I kill for a level editor? You know? Yeah. 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 We've been talking about Metal Gear Maker forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're like you're like Tony Hawk's when you could create your own park <laughs> like, yeah. like that that kind of interface. <laughs> and a Metal Gear Forge. Yeah, look, like for real though, MGS One's VR kills MGS Two's. Mm-hmm. It's it's so much better. Like I don't know what it is about that game, but it's just it's so perfect for VR. It's just butter smooth. I'd always wish that MGS Three would have gotten like I, I guess they couldn't have been VR missions, but you could have called it like boot camp. No, it, you know? it killed me. It killed me watching that um, new Metal Gear video that came out. You know, like the unreleased content when it talked about the additional uh, missions for MGS Three, uh, and and uh, Kojima talking about how they had like you know like had like hundreds of VR stages that weren't possible to put into the game. Like, yo, where are they? Go get them. Like put put them somewhere. Like I would love to play those. The logic there, I've always presumed, is that um, when they sort of did their double dip on MGS three, uh, MGO sort of filled that void. You know, that was the big extra content thing. And then with MGS four, same deal. You know, all of the expansions to MGS four. There was no double dip version of MGS four. It just got expansions to the online mode. Yeah. Which so is I'm like, shame. I get it, but God, yeah, MGS4 VR missions would have been just nuts because I actually do like, despite my my criticism of MGS4, I do wish that there was more gameplay to it because there's Dude, a lot of stuff. I wish you could have been at the Limeade run or at least seen the uh, MGS4 run. They absolutely shit on and great, great event altogether, but that. That part particularly humored me because they just shat on the game like the whole time, uh, and in a loving way. Like what specifically? It was a uh, Sir Schmuckle running and Sergeant Silent doing commentary. So both extremely experienced MGS4 runners and players, and they just just took the piss out of the game the entire time. I'm gonna have to watch the stream of this. Just like breaking down exactly how many, how much gameplay is in each 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 chapter just specific shitting on chapter three was great like (laughs) i I definitely encourage you to watch it i tried to get really hit the spot 
yeah, that, that'll be up on Limes' channel soon as well. And like, um, Sparty is like the main world record holder for MGS4, and he is so vocal about how much he dislikes the game and how, how like, why do you how, run it then? I don't know, they all hate themselves, Dude, I guess. Have you seen like <laughs> speedrunners? Like, <laughs> The, I like masochists, all of you. No, it's, Apache, I'm, I'm an Apache will send me Apache will send me like videos of like somebody like speedrunning some shitty Barbie game, and he'll be like, "I'm gonna start running this in a few months." <laughs> yeah, I'm an anomaly because I like the love the games that Ken I run. Strat. Yeah, pretty much. That's some, no, I'm not gonna get into Barbie games. <laughs> I'm not. Going I'm now. scared that you could. And I bet you could. Oh no, I meant uh, for a speed run. Yeah, I meant right now on the show. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but you also did a run at uh, Limeade too, right, Apache? Didn't you do? You did like your single, uh, your single punch strat. Yeah. So I did. I did Metal Gear Solid Three all camos, and it was the most. It was honestly one of the, it was the best marathon run I've ever done. It was so funny all the way through, like. It, it's one I'm like so proud of and afterwards I felt really good at like just the performance aspect of it so a load of dumb stuff happened during the run um my internet like kept cutting out and during the ladder section I always go like complete silence and just let the song play right and it cut out like like two thirds through the song right my internet like cut out oh, no. so when it came back I got to the top of the ladder and just jumped off and then climbed up it again yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, like, we're all having, we're all having, me and Vermilion was on commentary with me, and he's having a really good time. People are enjoying themselves. And we're coming up to the, the, the boss. And recently, I did that, that single punch only the boss fight. So you have to hit her 90 times. You have to uh, counter her 30 <laughs> times in a row without getting hit or without messing up a counter. And then you punch her three times, and then you have to, like, dodge her Patriot, hide, and make her engage you again. It takes, like, no, nine no minutes hit. to do. Uh, no yeah, hit. without, without, without getting hit. I I watched him. I watched him on Discord practicing that shit. It's crazy. I, I just wanted to get it recorded to put on YouTube, right? And so I did it like seven. Probably took about seventy attempts of me sat there trying to do this on Discord, just with uh, me and Days. Days just like watching me play and playing Final Fantasy. So we're getting to the end of the run, and I'm like joking about it, and they're like, "Hell, let's do a poll, get him to attempt it." And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, you know, I'll att I'll attempt it once." Everyone's like voting yes for me to do it, and then I fucking nailed it first time, first try. I can't. I am so sorry I missed this. That's uh, like, I was like, pretty much like, offline that whole weekend. It sounds like y'all both had a good weekend. So I mean, there's always yeah, I, the vod, right? Yeah. Internet detox, but I'm gonna go watch that. that that's like yeah. that's like the, the one where I, I, you know, you do these. You, you can never know what will happen in the run, what will happen in the performance, and. Like, you know, things can go badly, things can like put you off and make you feel shit. And so the things you're saying aren't as aren't as fun and you don't get people as engaged. But after that run, I just felt like no matter what happened during the run, no matter what went wrong, I just kept it it just felt really good. The best way I can describe it, it's it's the one I'm most proud of. And the one if like it ever comes up and people are saying, Oh, I wanna what check out one of your speedruns, that's the one I'll show them. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. It was I was at the beach this weekend, just yeah, doing the whole like not online thing for a bit. So, I, I, the the what thing? I've never heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> I touched sand. I, I went on the internet when I was seven years old and and never never left. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> no, it sounds like a, it sounded like a fun show. I saw some clips where uh yeah, even some of the uh the podcasts got mentioned on the during the show. Yeah, thank you so much for that donation <laughs> with uh, <laughs> with podcast references. I, I love it, man. Everyone keeps bringing that up ever, ever, ever since. Like I, I said that as a joke. Like the whole uh, "I'm not actually British." Fingers just says that in editing. That has been yeah. brought up like fifteen times to me since yeah. since the last <laughs> episode. That needs to be a T-shirt. put in one of those mid show breaks like they do on brain structure. I did something smart because I really wanted to listen to what he had to say about Nope. And I listened to it in the shower using my Bluetooth speaker. So it was uh, like, okay. it was, Dude. it was less stressing on the ears. Yeah. You just uh, had water filtering out the rest of the harsh frequencies. Yeah. That's a smart idea. Exactly. I see. This is a good segue into the theme of today's brain structure. So, 
Mr. Kojima on film. No, no. <laughs> well, you did give it away. But something I noticed is they got they they cut back a lot on the voiceover. That was something you guys said before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is still there. Like when it, when it's there, it's really loud and still abrasive. But uh, I don't know. The, the flow is a lot better. That's one thing. Hey, there's more inflection. Them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked, especially when he said uh, the movie's called Nope, but it's a yes. Like that's that's so fucking Kojima. <laughs> yeah, like, it is. Kojima like, of, course would, and, of course he would say yeah, that. He said that a couple of times. It, yeah. He said it like five times. And it it yeah. just would have been a disservice yeah. if he didn't have the inflection, if he had the inflection that he had or lack of. From the translator's one. doing a great job. It's, it's the audio engineer that I've got beef with yeah. still, but yeah, we're we're getting there. We got the new episode uh, tomorrow, and the, the reason I came in so hot last the last episode was because we had just finished, or I had just finished listening uh, all the way through on the, on that second episode, or the the first episode actually. It was just like, geez, man, this sounds so bad. So we dove right into it for the second one. Like, yeah. Uh, definitely notice some improvements so, i mean at the very least they're listening to some of the criticism and yes you know, i felt like kojima was talking to me when he was like hey, you know sometimes I don't, I don't you know i try not to be yeah. really critical of people and you know if i don't like something i'll, I'll keep my mouth shut i was like god damn it like <laughs> and since i'm also a creator i don't want to hurt other creators feelings even if their work isn't entirely good when you make something you face a lot of both praise and criticism yeah, that was um I don't know. I mean, that was interesting that he said yeah. that. Uh cuz I wrote it down when I was listening to it earlier. Uh, like I wanted to just sort of get some notes about it to think about. Um and he said he doesn't want to hurt other creatives, so he'll praise people, but he won't bash well, them. He won't but say he, negative. And that yeah. that explains the whole I watched so and so. Yeah. Yeah, saw blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, which we've talked about before that he does that. And there's like only a one review I can think of that he's ever given of something where yeah. it sounded like he was dancing around calling it terrible. And that was for uh, it was something where he like turned it off and switched on something else. He was like, yeah, I started that watching was one, this. Yeah. Then, I, then I watched something else, though. That was kind of cool. <laughs> well, I was thinking of like he wrote I think it was for the Rolling Stone, but he wrote a review of Alien Covenant. And it was just like a ballet of him trying to avoid calling it terrible. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I thought was, was curious was that, you know, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said, but it was something like, take the things I share on my Twitter feed with a grain of salt, because not everything I share is interesting. <laughs> yeah. On my own social media accounts, I'll praise things, but I don't want to bash them. So take it with a grain of salt. Not every part of the things I share is particularly interesting or good. I see. <laughs> Which I was like, oh, wow. Oh, man. Hmm. He helps out people. He kind of like, boosts, yeah, he's, you know, even if he doesn't like it, which is he, actually yeah. kind of kind of nice. I got to I got to admit, I respect that. He gives it the Kojima bump. That's what it yeah. is. You know, it's like, hey, <laughs> what I actually really liked about the episode wasn't so much the movie talk, but when he nerded out about UFOs. Yes. And admitted that he believes yeah. in UFOs. And I was like, this is the most interesting <laughs> thing I've heard him talk about in a while. He went out there. I, I like how he sort of broke down sort of like the generational aspect of it. Like, yeah. because there's so much technology prevalent in terms of like cap motion, like capturing that, you know, kids are less inclined to believe in UFO these days, which is funny, which and he mentions this in the podcast. That's that's actually kind of a point that's brought up or or considered in the plot of of, of Nope, um, and it, I do think it's funny that I, th I thought he did a good breakdown of the film. Um, it's I call it Jaws for weirdos, which I, I fucking, <laughs> I, 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 which means I love the movie. It's it's like Jaws meets Annihilation in a way, uh, but I do I think he broke out in the film great. Um, I, I like how he spoiled like Keith David's part, but said he didn't want to spoil it. Or the movie, <laughs> um, but yeah, the the aliens talk uh, when he diverged into that. It was kind of a, a great sort of left field segue there. He said he once uh, went pretty close to Area Fifty One, which is interesting. So I, th I think I remember there. God, I I know I heard once that he was in Vegas for something. I can't remember what it was for. Probably some game promotion thing. But 
Uh, I bet that was when it was. Did he raid Area 51? Yeah, he just ran right in. That was what I was asked, thinking to myself in the shower. They, they truly can't stop everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like well, he's one of the few people on Earth that could ask to come in and they'd be like, you know what? All right. Bro, it's, it's Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Son, we're the military. We can't just let like game developers in. Yeah, I know, but he made Metal Gear. Like, <laughs> oh shit, really? Wait, Metal Gear? No, it, like I hate to say it too, but that might like play into those those uh, rumors or the, those conspiracies that he killed the Japanese prime minister. They, oh, oh of course they let him into Area Fuck. 51. He's a fucking <laughs> agent of the alumni. Well, he did say stuff like. Um, God, maybe I, 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 I'm wondering now if I misheard him because I had to listen to it a few times and I'm still not sure I heard it right. But I think he said that like his generation, uh, collaborated with aliens. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> and like worked with them, but then he followed it up with like, we'll never meet them because they're too far away. And I'm just really confused. Yeah, I, I, I need, I need another podcast elaborating on this just name dropping aliens <laughs> yeah he needs to do a, like a whole podcast on just talking about paranormal Dude. stuff like i would listen to that like i just constantly yeah like forget game development talk about ghosts and shit right what does he really believe he puts them in his games all the fucking time so i mean he's yeah he's on some type of shit yeah yeah he and he and he talked about that it gives me Big Boss believing in Santa Claus energy. He's real, I tell ya. He needs to bring me presents. And... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was him, you know, I'm trying to make Big Boss relatable for plot purposes here. Let's make him relatable. I relate to believing in Santa Claus. Have you ever heard the, um, there was like a, 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 a head cannon thing that a fan wrote one time about how um, the boss would deliver presents to him, and that's why he believed in Santa. And then when she went away, he wondered, you know, why Santa didn't show up anymore, uh, and figured he was just too bad to get gifts. <clears throat> and that's why he was so sad. It was something like that, I don't remember. The boss would be sneaky enough to be able to put presents under there, so, yeah. I wonder if, like, he left her cookies. <laughs> Left her calorie mates. Yeah. But yeah, he was he mentioned how Metal Gear always uh sort of references aliens from time to time, but but you know, never really dives in. Yeah. And every game's got like a little sprinkling of alien references mm -hmm. in it. You know, like MGS one has like the UFOs in, in the VR mission and, and MGS two. You find that oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Go ahead. No, you're yeah, that that's one and that sort of throws back to MGS two. Because you've got the colonel talking about being abducted and... Raiden, something happened to me last Thursday when I was driving home. I had a couple of miles to go. I looked up and saw a glowing orange object in the sky to the east. It was moving very irregularly. Suddenly, there was intense light all around me. And when I came to, I was home. What do you think happened to me? Huh? Fine. Forget it. I'm finding a crop circle in four, like, what right. the fuck? What the fuck, Kojima? And now it explains why that was there. And Little Grey, too, with the, you know, flash of the of the the famous photo of the two guys holding hands with the hairless monkey. Mm hmm. What was there in three? I know there was something. What was the alien reference in three? Was it like a paramedic codec call or something? Talking about a movie? I know there was something. Apache? You got the, uh... I'm like, I'm like going through my brain trying to fucking remember. Yeah. Yeah. God damn! It. You know, watching the cutscenes is not my strongest suit. I'm trying, to, it's going to be something paramedic says. Snake, have you heard of it came from outer space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. And that is why I really appreciate like resident evil because that's uh you can watch cutscenes while still speed running because it doesn't count against your internal game time get hype re4 remake <laughs> i'm so torn on that one um and i actually can't wait 
I'll play it. It's gonna be it's so fucking hype. I have a, I have one important question about the RE4 remake. Is it A team or B team? Um. Is it yeah. is it being developed by the A team or the yeah. B team? Yeah, I the, think they like straight up kicked out Neobard. I mean, I don't actually know what happened, but I really doubt it's Neobard. I think that's the name. RE3 remake was a travesty. I c- I can't go through that again. Well, that was B. So yeah, that that'd be B team. So now we're back on A team. Maybe. RE4 in VR was great, though. Did you? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I never got to play it since I don't have a quest, but obviously you, you do, dude, because you, you work on this stuff. Um, yeah. How How is that? I mean, disclosure, I, I didn't play the original back in the day. So what? Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking unicorn yep. here, everybody. That's crazy. <laughs> that's fine. But you do know we have to beat you with sticks now. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No one cares. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's Titan VR though. Yeah. There's yeah. I mean, from what I've read about the original, like you couldn't you couldn't move and shoot at the same time and stuff like that. Like they've tweaked some things to make it smoother for VR, and it it translated really well. I think. Have you gathered? I mean, I, I admittedly I'm not sort of in the know about the timetables with your project, but. You know, did that provide any sort of inspiration with you translating the gameplay into VR? And to a broader scope, you know, are, were there any games that translated to your inspiration? I know that you you said that you weren't affiliated with the Boneworks guys, but for instance, did Boneworks maybe provide some like structure into how you wanted your VR gameplay to work? Yeah, definitely. Boneworks has the most amazing full body it's an ik rig where you can when you move the feet will will step automatically and so that's something i've been trying to develop my own version of but yeah i mean games like like the re4 in vr that that kind of inspires me too but i i mean i i think the original metal gear was so well designed that it just it just works already like stuff like you know, having the the footstep sounds louder on different materials or or footprints in the snow, like all that stuff is just awesome for VR. Yeah. Not that I've implemented everything, but it's theoretically, I think it all just is great for it. That does sort of raise the question, though, when it comes to rebuilding, you know, everything into Unreal Engine, apart from VR, what sort of things are you looking to add or change or or possibly reinterpret like uh like where are you on the scale of like uh you know a full on remake that does everything uniquely and differently and completely replicating the original without any deviation so like like what changes are you making well uh i'd say the the a full remake is probably for the community like 10 years or something it would take. I yeah. mean, it's a small it's a small group. We're making very slow progress, but there's some really dedicated people and I think I think I'm I'm definitely going to stick with it and some other people in the group are are pretty dedicated and yeah, I could see us 10 years from now having a pretty full featured thing. In the meantime, though, like what what sort of changes are you making to sort of the original or, or like any enhancements or, or specific things you wanted to fix? Quality of life changes, those sort of things. Yeah, like. Play, I mean, playing through in first person was was like the first thing that I started really messing with and like. The the ocelot fight, everybody's like, when you do that in first person, it's just it's just ruined. And so. I don't see that as an issue with playing in first person. I, I think it's more of an issue of the the AI of the boss, and he needs to duck and take cover. And yeah, because he's never yeah. just running around like an asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, there's stuff like that that for VR would have to change, but I don't think it will drastically change the game. I've seen too where you where you're. I don't know if it's just a consequence of putting things into the Unreal Engine and you just, you know, there's still more work to be done or 
or if this is sort of the the way you plan to go with it. But in some of the, the footage and the screenshots, there are definitely lighting differences because Unreal Engine has a more sophisticated lighting system. So is that something you're you're sticking with and you're trying to work through or do you plan on sort of like, you know, dialing it back to like vertex lighting like the PS1 had or sort of like what are you making visual changes? You know? Yeah. So let's yeah, I haven't really gotten into this. Like one of the big goals is to keep everything like just keep it exactly as it was. But then I'm also build, re, remaking like fully custom models, higher details with I got AI upscaled textures and yeah, the lighting is is going to be tweaked more. And yeah, a lot of the videos there isn't any lighting at all, and I like I'm using a flashlight to walk around with, and yeah. But those were yeah, that was before we were able to rip the lighting. So uh, yeah, there was a while where there wasn't any lighting, but so yeah, it's going to be tweaked more, and and there'll definitely be changes and. So we're, we're everybody kind of looked at it, you know, as like early early footage, more as more as like this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. We we pulled a, a GTA six on you. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's still very early days. It's it's rough. Some of the stuff is is not. This unfinished game looks unfinished. Yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? Didn't you God know forbid. visuals are the first thing that you work on with a game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. Well, I'll be honest. I'm I'm an artist, not a programmer. So I, that actually is kind of the route I've been taking. <laughs> yeah. Nice. God. So. Yeah, that was another. The GTA leak was another instance. Aside from the, um, you know, the M- MG Metal Gear sort of rumor collection during TGS, uh, where I was just like, "Come the fuck on, y'all!" Like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's. I couldn't believe that much got leaked. I, re- I really love the solidarity of all the game developers releasing like unfinished stuff from their games, just saying, "Look, this all it all looks like shit." Games at this stage always yeah. look like yeah. shit. Yeah. And just the fucking the audacity and confidence of random Twitter <laughs> user Eleven to be like, "Well, actually, if you know about game design, and just make a complete fucking ass of themselves in front of everyone." I, I love it when that happens. And and to use it to suggest that that GTA six is like gonna be bad or based off this footage it's bad. Like it's just so uh it, Gamers. And this this is this is coming from somebody who's like I, I haven't like not not sitting on the best of terms, but like I've been just like, oh GTA is just doing GTA or Rockstar is just doing GTA online and, and, and pulling out of that cow, that golden cow for as long as they can. And now I'm just like Feeling complete sympathy for them. Like, come on, y'all. Yeah. Act like you have some sense. Yeah. In the case of the art guy, God, I mean, that that tweet is getting memed on so hard and in so many places. It just sort of reminds me of the last time uh, something like this happened, which was the you cheated not only the game, but yourself tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You cheated not only the game, but yourself. You didn't grow, you didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. Nothing was risked and nothing was gained. It's sad that you don't know the difference. Yeah, that guy guy privated his Twitter, by the way. (laughs) He was getting really shit on. I mean, they got Cam Clark to, like, record for a liquid snake codec. Dude, you know what's really funny? I'm the reason that Cam Clark did that. I don't Are know you, you serious? That. Yeah, if you look on the video, the version, like I sent it to him and said it'd be really funny if he voiced this and he did it. Oh and if God. you look at the video on his YouTube, you'll see fingers uh, like a watermark on the on the video, like on the image that he used oh, for man, the video. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. We gotta get liquid <laughs> snake on this show. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh man. Um, but yeah, I can't believe that much got leaked. It was like an hour of footage almost. Yeah. I hate all this leak shit though. Yeah. They're just 
Kind of just like ruins my day. Right. I, I don't watch. I haven't looked at any of the Grand Theft Auto Six leaks apart from what's like been forced into my view by Twitter. But I haven't seen. I haven't looked at any of the footage. I hate leaks. I don't even like watching trailers for stuff. I like to get yeah. the most authentic experience possible. And it's it's harder nowadays, right? It's like so hard to get an authentic experience with a game. Entire like plots are getting leaked these days. Like, mm-hmm. I, I hate it. I really don't want. I, I really hate leakers do you know what i hate more than leakers here we go (laughs) here let's do this oh i'm so excited so i'm sure everyone's aware because it was today right it was today but the uh the source of the the metal gear solid and silent hill rumors was one guy who was making it up and i don't want to like I don't want to speak for him. I'll say what he put in his video. He said, hey, everyone, Dan here. I'm just coming on here to apologize. If you're not familiar with what's happened, I created an alternate Twitter account called The Real Insider and started leaking things. The one that gained a lot of followers was Assassin's Creed. I leaked the title of the games, the actress, a few other things, and the account started to take off. And you know I mentioned Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid Remake, and I can say there was no NDAs involved because it's all bullshit. It's all lies. What a load of bullshit. Yeah. And he even says why he did it. He says, it's the clout. It's the buzz. It's being addicted to the thrill of thousands waiting on what you're going to say. Listen to yourself. You sound demented. (laughs) What did I fucking tell you all? What what have I been saying for so long? Mm -hmm. I've caught so much shit for this. the, The entire time I've spent in this fucking Metal Gear community, I've caught so much shit for this. Of calling these fucking pathetic loser game journals exactly what they are. They're like addicted to this reverence that comes with being in the know, mm. but they have no talent or creativity or passion that gets them that status legitimately. Generally no respect for other people either. Yeah, it's, it's so gross. That Dan Allen admitting that he like torpedoed his entire career for the endorphins of some clicks on Twitter is the most honest thing I've seen a game journal do in ages. <laughs> <laughs> he has a two hundred thousand subscriber YouTube account for now, but he was like playing like cloak and dagger, making up bullshit like metal gear rumors it was so weird to sit and watch him like black and white and so honestly explain like why he did it like he didn't have to do that like, like so I, I i suspected that of all these people anyway these like game journos and these like leakers that's how i thought they were anyway and he actually gave me proof of it all, all the other like journos that like hyper push these rumors are just as dishonest as he is because we knew they were all bullshit. We were all sat there saying this is complete horseshit. You know, this is, this is just complete dishonesty. These people, now that they're all like cannibalizing and regurgitating this story for their audience, going, oh look how bad this guy is. They're all the same people who were dishing up that festering pile of garbage as news just a few weeks ago. They're yep. all the same people the... who were reporting mm-hmm. the shit. What does it the kids say? He said the quiet part out loud. <laughs> Mate, I'm not. I'm not going to say any names of any of the journos, but if the shoe fits, fucking wear it. Don't believe rumors. That's why I was like, I wanted to straight up say, like, I'm. I'm not trying to specifically just remake the game because I feel like that's. I've probably caused some. I've probably caused some rumors with what I'm doing. So, doubtless, yeah. I mean, <laughs> people will see those words, Metal Gear and remake, and and it doesn't matter what the context is. It's going to turn into something. It's like a non-stop game of telephone that a lot of these game journalists are just you know it's a fire that they're pouring gasoline on constantly because their paychecks kind of rely on it yeah you know and that's not to say there's not good reporting out there okay you say that you say that but the guy had this demented rant about doing it for the clout and feeling good and that's where i'm thinking this shit is crazy because it goes it, it, beyond it, there is some I guess there is some monetary incentive yeah. in some avenues, but some for some folks it's just like I liked the thrill. No, you're made right. me feel good. What the fuck? Go outside. Smoke some weed. It was like the end of breaking bad. <laughs> I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. And I was really I was alive. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking about. 
I have seen game journalists talk about how crazy it is that people say, oh, you're paid off, you're doing this for money, you're doing X for, for the money of it. And there's that's probably true because uh, I doubt they're they're making a lot and you can't live off of free video games. But the social sort of credit you get from it is it, it's if they probably you know, it's it's something that you probably get a little bit of a high from, you know, when when you have that many people listening to every word talentless hacks larping as like games industry people it's literally just fucking larping absolute fucking weirdos it's great that you feel you makes you feel good it gives you the good brain chemicals but it's all predicated on bullshit a lot of it yeah how can you feel good about that it's yeah, it's elitism. I mean, and and that's not to say that that every game journalist is like this. There are some genuinely good reporters out there, but they're few and far between. And just fucking, it just just like just like fucks the industry up for other people. And it's an industry that's full of issues. It's an industry that's like they need to drive engagement on every on everything they do. So it's like an arms race, right, to have the most yeah. clickable thing. And this is the result of that arms race. And, and it, it wasn't it, so bad as long as the business was sustainable because but because of the internet it no longer is so there's that scramble of I've got to make ends meet but also I like the 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 you know like you said the endorphins you get from it so like I don't know I mean I'm not a game journalist but I've seen so I see more dishonesty than honesty it sucks too because it normally just ripples out like there there'll be like one story and then everybody just parrots it and it yeah, just becomes like a story that you see everybody you know way in on i'll give you a perfect example i bet you in fact I, I don't even need to bet you i know for a fact that most people uh i would say a majority of metal gear fans are probably under the impression that the metal gear solid 3 patchy slot was built using the fox engine despite the fact that there is absolutely no evidence to support that and there has there is no official documentation about it whatsoever but because a couple of journalists saw the pretty graphics and wrote articles for some of the more popular sites saying, yeah, it looks like Fox Engine graphics. Now that is assumed to be the truth. People read it and that sort of cemented itself in people's minds. And there is no factual basis for it whatsoever. Not to mention, it doesn't even make sense why you would do that. Just from a programming standpoint. Yeah, yeah it looks more like Unreal Engine to me. It's one time where you would put the visuals first. It's probably like, why would you need a game? You don't really. I mean, look, it's it's developed by a different subsidiary of Konami, and I know they've got their own workflow. Uh, I don't know what they're coding it in, but it would make absolutely no sense for them to do that kind of stuff because it's not the that type of game. It's not an interactive thing for the most part. There's some. You know, there are some dynamic elements to it, but it, it's th this is a there, there's a long, boring, complicated reason for why this is a really, right. it's, really it's, dumb claim. It's a non sequitur. The point is, is that like the basis of this claim is not necessarily from logically thinking through, you know, hey, it's a possibility that this could be it. It's somebody said it was and then it was like a game of telephone to where it became the truth. And that's why, like, any time, on the rare occasion when I make the mistake of letting somebody in real life know that I like Metal Gear, nine times out of ten, they're going to say, did you know they're remaking it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's a direct fucking cause of this. Uh, you know, the number of people that have come into my stream being like, oh, you're excited for the remake? And then, you know, I explain how it's an unfounded rumor, and then they get upset at me. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to be more careful about what I say. That's good, though. It's it's kind of sad, though, that you have to, like, walk that line. And, like, it goes, it kind of goes back to the point we were making with, like, with GTA, where this is, and, and people, uh, you know, shitting on Suigaden. Like, this is why we can't have nice things. This is why you can't be, you know, you can't be as transparent as you'd probably like to be with your communication. You have to tailor oh. it very particular. Yeah. Because you you know as a Metal Gear fan how shitty it is to deal with this type of stuff. The responses were nasty. I want to say this this, this entire Suikoden thing, this entire Suikoden outrage is a direct result of like Dan Allen and people like him who have 
just cemented this idea into people's heads that Konami is imminently going to announce a Metal Gear or Silent Hill remake. Yeah. And when they don't get it, people are lashing out at Konami, and it's just not fair. It's, it is not yeah, fair. Yeah, it's bullshit, yeah. They're drumming up hype just to set up set them up for failure. And then it's like, oh, you know. But the, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm, I've been sitting over here like, Konami's not just, you know, the people that make Metal Gear for me. Like, they, they've, they've, they're like the home of a lot of my favorite IPs. That's, you know, they, they've got the Ninja Turtle stuff. They've got Contra, Castlevania, all, all that shit. So we could end this a really good RPG series. So, I mean... When when they announce stuff, most of the time I'm just like fuck yeah. Like so, I've just been like kind of happy they've been going back and re-releasing all these series. And it seems I, I would kind of want them to iron it out and figure it out by the time they get to Metal Gear versus them rushing that out, you know, and having a bad port. Because we see what you know, we've seen what happens with the Silent Hill series, you know, with bad ports. So a lot of that's done by third parties, though, isn't it? Was was is Suikoden true do, being done in house? It seems like a little bit of both, like. Like Konami's involved because they're you know they they're trying to like Stairs, yeah. give it. You know. I, I love Nitroids just like extra vigilant about like the management of these projects. He's like, is the B team working on this? Yeah. <laughs> I need to know who's working on this port. Which third party are they contracting this to? Like, I love it. That's how you got to think about these things. You can't just go based off of a rumor that makes you feel good. I, I, you know, I don't want to sound like Lord Emmerich defending Konami because I feel like I'm more than fair when it comes to criticizing them. Oh Jesus, my God, dude. please cut that out. Baby. No, he knows I love him. He no, knows he I fucking is. love him. <laughs> I'll tell him that to his face. Don't, don't cut that out. I'll, t- I'll, tell him the, I'll tell him the truth, man. He went hard. I will say this. Him going off, I do love him, and then him going off about like, you, sorry for cutting you off, but him going off about, like, you Metal Gear and Silent Hill fans need to, like, act like you have some goddamn sense. Like, that was so good. <laughs> that was amazing, I, yeah. Chef's yeah. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, buddy. Good job. Because he's because he's exactly right. I, I, you know, I, I, yeah. I won't I won't jump to the defense in the same way that that he will, but. This time, I just don't think it was fair. I really don't think the outrage was fair. No, I agree. And, you know, I never got to play Suikoden, despite the fact that I basically, my childhood was more or less defined by binging JRPGs. So I'm looking yeah. forward to trying it. I think the first one is an incredibly good game. I, I, I have very fun memories of playing it, and I'm looking forward to uh, revisiting it. Yeah, the second one's great. So, on the subject of game announcements at TGS, Kojima looks like he's up to something again. Yeah, we don't really know what. Uh, yeah. We got that Who Am I poster. It's like kind of mixed signals, but it's not because I remember like the. I saw that the Kojima Productions Twitter said like no game announcements at TGS, but then there's this poster that's like Who Am I? Uh, so it you know it still could be something and it's it there's a very real chance that it couldn't be a game it could be a movie it it could uh this is like theory out of my ass but it could technically be a game it could be the xbox project since that was technically a game that was already announced it's technically not new Hmm. but otherwise yeah it's sort of a weird place with what they showed versus you know the expectations that they set a bunch of fans seem to figure out who the who the actress is uh, that's obscured. Yeah, they guessed Elle Fanning real quick. Yeah, Yeah, because it looks like it was taken from a stock photo of her, and then I guess they changed her hair and added some things and and blanked out her face. But like, It's so funny that everybody... Everybody tried to crank the brightness on it. Like, yeah, that was out. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Everybody doing calm down. What are, what are you doing? I could be wrong, but I think <laughs> the first person who figured it out was was Jose Molinas. Uh, I think he was the one that, that cracked it. Shouts so, out. So if he, yeah, if that was if that was you, buddy, good job. Um, but yeah, uh, there seems to be a popular fan theory going around, and don't believe rumors or theories. But it, I wouldn't put it past Kojima to do this. But I guess the thing that people keep parroting is that, uh, what if it's uh, Lou, uh, grown up, ooh, and you play as her from Luis from the end of Death Stranding. Yeah. And you play as her in Death Stranding too. Ooh. And that could be pretty cool. And I mean, yeah, I could I mean I could definitely see that casting working. 
But then again, it could be like Day said, like you said, it was, you know, it could just be literally a movie because he did say he wanted to do that. Didn't he say he was opening a studio for like other shit? Yeah, the L.A. the L.A. studio was going to let him collaborate with the West more. And then they've got, I think, the Amsterdam branch uh, next to uh, Gorilla, right? A playable female character, more like Woke Stranding. Am I right, gamers? <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised on on the 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 protagonist front that he never made a game about the boss. You know, I know he said he wanted to. Uh, maybe if he would have stayed, that would have been the next thing. That would have been MGS six. MGS zero. I would play the shit out of that game. Yeah, we all would have. Yeah. Kidding me? That would have been wild. Though I know for a fact, it, they, it, no doubt there would have been like some other legendary soldier that trained the boss, and like you just learn it's legendary soldiers all the way down. You know? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> There's no end to it. Um, so I don't know. It's we'll we'll see what he does. Is there uh, anything else you wanted to touch on with what you're working on, Vapor? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, it, if there was a way for me to contact Konami, like I would do that and try to get permission. But yeah, if they, if they want to shut me down, like, I don't, I don't know. It's could happen, but Boss, get down. keep your head down. We're going to keep at it. And there's a lot of passion in the community, like, and, and people are hungry for more content. So yeah, something's something's got to happen. Yeah, it looks fun, man. It's it's been like one of the things where it's like made me think about getting a, a VR set up and being like, all right, that, that could be kind of fun to fuck around and play with. Yeah, know? I would I would definitely try that. Good. I, I saw someone playing it in VR and they were they were like making out with Solid Snake on stream, <laughs> and that has no bearing on <laughs> me wanting to play the game or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people like to poke uh johnny in the in the bud oh jeez. <laughs> no. so yeah i'm glad i put i'm glad oh. I, I got that one in there all right man well uh if you want to uh you know tell people uh where they can find you online and you know where to where to check out this project and you know if you want to plug the discord where people can s- stay tuned with uh all, all the updates you guys are putting out you can go ahead with that. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter as Vapor Cephalopod, and I'm on SoundCloud as Cerebral Cortex Twenty Seven. So yeah, I produce music too, and oh hell yeah, yeah, and the and the Discord links are out there. You guys can find them on my Twitter. And cool. Yeah, anybody's welcome to join, and anybody that wants to contribute. It's uh, all the all the stuff's available. Just just ask. Well, cool, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show, man. We appreciate it. And, uh, look forward to playing some VR Metal Gear here soon. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, cool. Everybody can hit stop. Apache, you can turn off your UK filter, and we're good. <laughs>